What is going on, you guys? Pep Platypus here, and it is time for my Captain America Civil War spoiler-filled review. I do apologize for not getting it out on Saturday, but there was a lot of technical difficulties. I had the video ready, it was recorded, and then I tried to put it in my computer, and my computer was like, nah, fuck you, can't do it. I had no idea why, so hopefully if you you watch this one, you mean I was able to upload JoJo, or not JoJo, I was able to upload uh, Dragon Ball and My Hero Academia, so hopefully this works. Captain America Civil War two things before I get into the review. Number one, obviously it contains spoilers. I was going to do a spoiler-free review with a spoiler section, but I figured this movie has enough spoilers to talk about that I don't really need to do that. Plus, just go for the throne on it and make a spoiler-filled video. Those are my best videos where I can just go in-depth and talk about it like I do with anime episodes instead of trying to be vague and not go in-depth. So, sorry my nose itches. No takes, by the way. I've tried to record this way too many times. You're going to get what you're going to get. I'm sorry if I ramble a lot. But anyways, hopefully you're still entertained by it and you enjoy what I have to say about the movie. But yeah, spoiler warning, don't watch it if you haven't seen the movie. If you want to see the movie and you want to know if it's good or not and you're watching this video, short review is it's amazing. If you like these kind of movies, go fucking see it. If uh, you have seen the movie or if you don't give a shit about spoilers, stay tuned. Uh, also, I want to mention my uh, 200 subscriber Q&A that I'm doing. I have a lot of questions. And I'm doing it on Tuesday, so this will be the last day you guys can put in questions. Put them in in this comment section of this video. I'll make the video on Tuesday, and that'll be done. So this is the last day for questions. Put in your last few, because I have a lot, and I'll make the video tomorrow. So, with that being said, oh, and uh, Seven Deadly Sins uh, review for the newest chapter will also be out today. Uh, same time, same upload time, they'll both go up at the same time. However, if YouTube is stupid and doesn't show you one of them, of course, find it on my channel. If you're watching this one, go find the Seven Deadly Sins video, and then of course in the Seven Deadly Sins video I will say go check out my Civil War review. I will especially have to do that, considering Seven Deadly Sins will most likely get more views. Now, I'm already rambling, so let's just get this shit started. Now, for starters, we're going to talk about the characterization and the character development and talk about a little bit about the fighting between Steve Rogers and Tony Stark. And to start by doing that, we're going to shit on Batman v Superman a little bit. Um, and I know there are going to be people who watch this video and they're going to be like, you're a Marvel fanboy. And I'm going to be like, no, I'm really not. But go ahead, leave a dislike. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the view. Um, but that's if anybody like that watches this video. I know you guys, my fans, you guys are cool, but yeah, I'm not a Marvel fanboy. It's just that DC fucked up hard, and it's the perfect comparison. I mean, you really can't get a better comparison than this. In Batman vs. Superman, we barely know these characters. Uh, they've only been in a couple movies. Bat ben Affleck's Batman's only been in this movie, Batman vs. Superman. So it's kind of like, okay, well, we don't have a history with the characters, so we don't really understand their full scope of their ideologies. So it's already rushed in that sense. But then on top of that, their motivations are basically... You kill people, you're above the law, you're a vigilante. And then the other guy, Batman or whatever, says, well, you're above the law because you're godlike and you're a vigilante and you kill people. And it's like, okay, well, then you're both just hypocrites fighting each other for hypocritical reasons. Woo. And then you get the fucking forced fucking I kidnapped your mom bullshit, which, total digression, I do apologize, but that made no fucking sense. That Jesse Eisenberg, because I can't call him Lex Luthor, because Jesse Eisenberg, uh, he knew who Superman was, and where his mom lived, and who Batman was, and when to do this so that it was Batman's time to fight Superman. Batman set up the fucking signal and everything on the same night. He figured out all that impossible shit off screen. That was ridiculous, but digression aside, uh, bad motivation, forced reason to have their big fight, really forced conclusion and resolution, and just not that good of characterization, plus the hypocrisy, in this movie, we do have, oh shit, multiple movies to build this up. Avengers, Age of Ultron, seeing these two interact, seeing their ideologies clash. You like the characters because they have their own movies. Iron Man 1, 2, 3. I mean, I you know, 2 and 3 have some pretty big criticisms, but I think everyone likes Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man in all of them. And you have Captain America 1 and 2, which are both really, really good. I think Captain America 1 is one of the most underrated movies in the Marvel Universe. It's probably my favorite in Phase 1, easily, aside from Avengers. And uh, Winter Soldier definitely gets the high praise it deserves, because it's fantastic. So you have two movies with uh, Iron Man. Well, three movies with Iron Man. Two movies with Captain America. You understand the characters. 
you know their motivations, you know what they've been through, you get that they know each other, you get that they're friends, but that they bicker because they disagree, and then they're given this ultimatum, and they have to decide, do we have a leash put on us, do we go on these UN missions that they want to assign to us, do we go in when the other dudes fail and they have to send us in, do we have limitations? And uh, you can definitely see Tony Stark's perspective on this, but then Captain America's perspective, he doesn't say it in the movie, but with what happened with S.H.I.E.L.D. and HYDRA, and even that first mission in Winter Soldier where Black Widow's doing shit that he wasn't aware of, it's kind of like, okay, do we really... He has issues with authority. And then on top of that, it's like, these UN fuckers have agendas. Do we... Like, what kind of missions are they going to send us on? And if someone else is hurt somewhere else, and we got to help, and we can't go because they're not letting us... He doesn't want the limitations, and that's what superheroes usually do. Superheroes usually fight outside the law in order to protect people and get their job done. And uh, I think that with Captain America, I side more with him on that perspective. But I definitely see the limitations thing, because this is very destructive. I mean, with Batman, obviously he fights outside the law, he's a vigilante. But in the case of Batman, I'm talking about comics Batman, I'm not going back to Batman versus Superman. He's a vigilante, he does all that. Cities aren't getting wiped out when Batman goes into action. So I definitely see Tony's perspective, and I definitely see Captain America's perspective, and I lean more towards Captain America. But it's definitely a good debate that the two characters have. It's also nice that the two characters aren't at each other's throats instantly. It's kind of this reluctant, you know, like, dude, Cap, you gotta sign this thing. Like, I, I don't want this to escalate, but you were really being too stubborn here. And, you know, Cap's like, I'm not gonna do it. And even when he finally decides to do it, there's still, you know, another thing. It's like, no, I'm not, can't do it, you know, gives the pen back and everything, and it's just, it's really cool. Um, you know, it's really cool seeing these characters interact like this, and it's just, it's great, and the fighting is awesome, and all, the, the way it leads into the fighting is so badass. You really feel it in that moment where Vision draws the line, literate, literally, figuratively, whatever the fuck, he literally and figuratively draws the line between them, and... They start walking towards each other, and they start marching, and they start running, and everything that built up in the movie, it all just fit. In Batman vs. Superman, going back to that, once they start fighting, and once it's happening, you're like, oh, it's cool, because they're going to fight, but at the same time, you're questioning the motivations, and you just don't feel it in that moment when they're about to throw down, where here, you feel it after the entire movie built it up. And that airport scene is fucking fantastic, but I'll get into the action later. <clears throat> So that's the characterization for the main two characters. Great. Did a perfect job there. I'm not going to talk about everybody because there's just way too many to go into. But I will talk about the new characters and a couple returning characters. Number one, Ant-Man. Because this is the first time we see him interact with the other Marvel characters. Great synergy. Great chemistry. Whatever you want to call it. He's hilarious. Uh, I'm it's so cool that they did giant Ant-Man. That was I didn't think they were going to do that in the movies. I thought they were going to say that's too silly. We can't do it. But they did it. And it was really, really cool ripping off airplane wings and shit and Spider-Man with the fucking Empire Strikes Back shit. All that stuff was great. So, yeah, Ant-Man was awesome. Really funny. Loved to see him interacting with the characters. Uh, other returning characters, Vision and Scarlet Witch. I liked the parallel between these two characters. I liked seeing him basically say, I don't know what this is in my head, but I want to control it so it doesn't control me. And basically he draws a parallel between himself and her and her abilities and they grow a nice little friendship, and it's, it's cool. He kind of mentors her to a certain extent, and because of this, you can feel the betrayal, and you can feel the emotion when she slams him through the ground, which is really cool, by the way, but when she slams him through the ground and escapes with Hawkeye. Also, seeing Hawkeye try to fight him was funny, because just, just, there's no way Hawkeye's beating Vision. There's just no fucking way, so that was funny. But overall, their interaction and their characterization was really, really good. So moving on to the new characters, I'll start with Zemo. I don't know if this is a comic book character. Um, considering his name, I'm going to assume he is. I don't know if he was a good representation of the character. I'm going to assume no, but I have no idea. He would served his purpose for the movie, which is why I'm not going to be too hard on him. He is kind of another Marvel villain that's a little bit... Eh, you know what I mean? But at the same time, the focus should be on Captain America and on Tony Stark. And that's where the focus is. So this guy try, kind of trying to pull the strings and kind of trying to manipulate things by framing Bucky and trying to awaken or seemingly awaken these Winter Soldiers. It's cool that he did his purpose, had his motivation, 
tied in with Black Panther, who we'll get into, tied in with Black Panther's uh, vengeance character arc. So all that stuff was good, and his motivations made sense. He was downplayed. Whenever it would cut to him doing something, I'd be kind of like, okay, what is this guy doing? What's going on? And it felt sort of like out of place, but not a big deal. And again, he served his purpose for the movie, and the focus shouldn't have been on him, so it wasn't on him, and that's really, really good. So basically, I'm giving Zemo a pass, is basically what I'm getting at. He was okay, did his job, he gets a pass. Moving on to Black Panther, played by Chadwick Boseman, I believe. He does a great job. He The character's badass, the suit's awesome, his fight scenes are great, he looks super fucking cool. One of the, th one of the things a lot of people thought was, though, is he going to be shoehorned into this movie? How does it make sense that he's here? It makes perfect sense. The Avengers blew something up in Wakanda, some people died, they went to this UN thing, the King of Wakanda was there, he died in the explosion that, you know, Zemo caused, you know, framing Bucky, and then Black Panther wants to get revenge on Bucky. He even gets a good character arc about vengeance when he interacts with Zemo, and it's just, it's fantastic. It was so well done, it was a perfect way to execute a small character arc without giving it too much focus or too little focus. It was perfect. So that was great. Moving on to the one, the only, your friendly neighborhood, Spooderman, the Spider-Man himself, Tom Holland. Oh man, this was just so surreal. It was so surreal to see him in the action scenes, standing alongside these characters, talking to these characters. We finally get to see Spider-Man in the MCU. And how is Tom Holland as Spider-Man slash Peter Parker? For what he had to do in this movie, for his role, he was fantastic. He was a great Peter Parker. He was a great Spider-Man. I mean, and I love feeling validated by Marvel Studios. Because so many people were like, Andrew Garfield's a shitty Spider-Man. All these things about, like, he's so bad because of this and that, because of the clothes he wears, he's not a nerd, and blah, blah, blah. And then Tom Holland comes around, and he's basically Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker again, but younger. And of course with less character development and everything, because he only has this one, like, 20 minutes of movie to be in. So basically, you have the same character as Andrew Garfield, to an extent, not quite, but similar to Andrew Garfield in so many ways... And of course, now people are changing their tune. People are like, oh, no, no, Tom Holland is amazing. They got Spider-Man right, even though he's exactly the same as Andrew Garfield, but Andrew Garfield was fucking terrible for some reason. It's bullshit. It's total hypocrisy in favor of fucking Marvel. Total bias. Um, but still, they got Spider-Man right. And uh, also, I want to give credit to uh, one of my subscribers, uh, Farhan Kapadia. I assume I'm saying your name right. I always question if I'm saying your name right. But you never call me on it, so I'm assuming I am. Uh, he pointed that out in a Google Plus post, so I want to give him credit for that. Uh, definitely, definitely got Spider-Man right. And I do still think Andrew Garfield is better because he had two movies to develop. But this Spider-Man looks great. His interactions with the characters are great. I didn't want him to be a pure fanboy, and he kind of is. But he's not in over his head either. He earns the respect of Captain America to a certain extent. He's able to take out Falcon and Winter Soldier temporarily. He's able to web them up. The interactions are great. I love when Falcon's like, you know, there's usually not this much talking in a fight. And it's like, well, yeah, when you're with Spider-Man, there is, motherfucker, because he doesn't shut up. And I love that they got the jokes in there, and they got just... It was fantastic. The Empire Strikes Back thing, and just everything. Spider-Man was just great. So surreal. I have to see the movie again just to see him in it again. That was just awesome, so... Yeah, fantastic. Tom Holland did a great job. Definitely want to see what they're going to do with uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. The after credit scene saying Spider-Man will return. It's just, uh, it wasn't just for this movie. And we knew it wouldn't be just for this movie. We knew that there was going to be a Spider-Man movie coming out. But to have them just confirm in the movie, in the credit scene, Spider-Man will return. It just feels so good to see it finally starting to materialize. And Homecoming, I mean, once we start seeing screenshots and set photos and shit, it's like, yes, it is happening, and it's just going to be so cool. So that's basically characters. Um, uh, they're all good. Like I said, the returning characters are all great. I don't want to talk about them too much because, you know, they're the returning characters. The returning characters I do talk, I did talk about were really, really good. They had good characterization and good development and good interactions. The new characters were great. Well, Zemo's okay, but the other new characters are great. And uh, I guess you could say that uh, Spider-Man feels a little bit shoehorned in, but 
honestly, fuck it at this point. I mean, we've wanted to see Spider-Man in this for so long. We can forgive one shoehorned in character. Plus, he played a part in the final battle. He was really, really cool. And this introduces his character to us for the rest of the universe and everything. And just, it was it was a great introduction. So, yeah. I feel, for some reason, I feel like Spider-Man, even though it's a very similar situation to Wonder Woman in Batman vs. Superman, I feel like Spider-Man was just done better. I think because we did get some exposition on who he is. He goes to school, you know, the suit, interacting with Tony, getting a new suit from Tony. Um, I just feel like there's more there than Wonder Woman, who was basically just, I'm going to walk around and look hot, and then in the final battle, I'm Wonder Woman. And then she fights, and then it's over. And it, like I said, it is very similar here, and I don't want to be a hypocrite, but I feel like there's just something about this that they just, they handled it better. Um... I don't know, maybe I am just being a little bit biased, but I feel like they handled this better than with Wonder Woman. And plus, it's just, it, again, it's Spider-Man being in the MCU. We've wanted to see this for so long. So, yeah, regardless, uh, I think Tom Holland did a great job. I'm going to be done with characters. I've already mentioned the action scenes a little bit here and there, but the action is just so good. I mean, not even just the big explosive shit in the, in the airport scene. Even the first action scene with the shield... And fucking just bashing dudes around into walls and shit. And the Falcon with his little robot drone. And Black Widow, even though her stuff was a little too shaky. It was so fucking cool. The impact was there. The people smashing into walls and seeing the walls crack was just... It was there and it was cool. All that stuff was great. The airport scene is even better. The airport sequence is even better than the final fight. But the final fight was more fueled on the emotion of the character. So in that regard, it was better, but... The airport scene was great. It fit in the comedy with Spider-Man. It had really cool moments. I love Spider-Man hopping from car to car as fucking Scarlet Witch is trying to hit him with him. I love seeing Spider-Man catch Winter Soldier's arm just with his fucking immense strength and just be like, oh yeah, you have a fucking metal arm. That's dope. <laughs> you know? I forget what he actually said, but I love that they got Spider-Man down right too from a combat standpoint. He's, He's pretty untouchable. Like, he gets smacked around in this movie, of course. You have to have it. He has to get touched. I mean, he can't be totally untouchable, but... Especially since he only has six months of experience. Six months of experience. Winter Soldier and uh, Falcon have military training. And yet, Spider-Man, with six months of experience, is able to fuck with them. And it's awesome. Like, it's not like, oh, it's bullshit. No, no, it's fucking cool. Because Spider-Man should be able to do that. He is a force... In the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, he's not Thor or Hulk or anything. But there's a reason why, even though he's so young, he gets the respect of these characters. It's because he's a fucking badass. And he gets that in this movie. Now, they still have him fanboying because he's young. And, he, you know, he's making the jokes. And he's talking about how cool all this stuff is that he's seeing. But it's the fact that he's still able to fight them and earn their respect and everything, I think, is really, really cool. And, uh, yeah, it was really badass. So... I sort of just digressed and went back into Spider-Man again. I mean, he is the standout, though, obviously, of these fight scenes. But Giant Ant-Man and everything we see with Black Widow and Hawkeye fighting and Black Panther and just everything here is just super cool and super badass. And Ant-Man shooting off the arrow and going inside the Iron Man armor. Um... Once again, giant Ant-Man, because I, I didn't think they were going to do that, and it's just so cool to see it. I really thought they were just going to say, it's too silly, and we can't do it, but they did it, and it was awesome. And, yeah, seeing Spider-Man swing around on him and shit. It was crazy. It was badass. It was super cool. Um, the fight in the airport was definitely the best part of the movie. But the final battle, the final confrontation was great, too. They kind of pull... I mean, they don't pull a Batman versus Superman, because the reason why the two characters end up becoming friends again makes sense. He realizes that Captain America was right about the Zemo guy, and that there's something going on, and he goes to help him. But then, of course, we find out that Winter Soldier, while unfrozen on a mission, killed Howard Stark and Tony Stark's mom, and it sucks that I don't... It's ironic that I don't remember the mom's name at all, because that's the one Tony Stark ended up caring about more, but... The emotion was high... And he tries to fight Winter Soldier, and they team up on uh, Iron Man. But even after teaming up, I mean, it still comes down to Cap versus Iron Man. And the emotions run high. They have the iconic shot with the shield and the enter and the laser blast hitting each other. And that was really, really cool. And just 
all of it was bad. And I love, I love from a fanboy perspective, because some people are probably thinking, like, how's Captain America going to beat Iron Man in a fight? And it's like, this is how, motherfucker, get right up in his fucking face and just start wailing on him. The computer even tells Tony, it's like, you can't beat him in hand-to-hand, -hand, and it's just so cool. Uh, he slams the shield into the little arc reactor and shuts down the suit. Um, you know, put that shield down, you know, it's not your shield, you know, that, my dad made it, and drops the shield. It was, it was so fucking cool. The whole thing was cool but emotional, and you really feel that there's going to be a divide going forward, which I guess is sort of a nitpick on my part, is that it kind of... It doesn't wrap up by the end of the movie, and they don't kiss and make up or anything, but in a certain sense, they kind of do when he gives him that letter and everything. You know, it's just... <laughs> It works, it's kind of a nitpick, but I do feel like if this movie had ended with them not being cool with each other in any way, at all, and, you know, just, there's still, like, you know, they don't hate each other's guts, but there's definitely, like, we can't just move past this easily. Uh, I feel like that would have been a more impactful ending, but for what we got, it was still good, and, uh... Maybe that is the ending they went for. I just feel like with the letter that he gave Tony and the little cell phone and everything, they sort of, they sort of made up. And uh, I feel like that was a little bit rushed towards the end, but total minor nitpick. I'm really looking for problems at this point in the movie because eh, there's not many. This movie is really, really well executed and really, really well done. My only real nitpick, because like I said, I can give Zemo a pass. I can give this a pass. It's fine. My only real nitpick in the movie, and it was really just sort of like a distraction that would happen every once in a while, I didn't get the location thing. Like, again, super small nitpick, won't affect the overall score, but the weird fucking, like, Queens or Moscow or wherever the fuck just popping up on the screen in big font was really weird. I don't know why they chose to do that. I mean, it was kind of cool when it said Queens because it's like, oh, we're going to see Spider-Man, but other than that... It was really fucking weird. Also, speaking of Queens, I like that little moment where he asked, Captain America asks where you're from. He's like, Queens. And he's like, oh, I'm from Brooklyn. That was a really cool moment. Again, it's so surreal to see the characters interact. But anyways, digression aside, um, that was a weird little uh, editing choice they made. But total minor, minor, super small nitpick. Again, looking for problems. That's the only thing that when coming out of the movie, I thought that was kind of weird. Uh, but other than that, the movie is just on point. I mean, I could go further, nitpick other tiny things if I really wanted to, but the point is, was it a great movie? It was a great movie. Is it, like, the best movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Uh, I'm not too sure. I mean, I'd probably say I like it better than uh, Age of Ultron, maybe, you know? And I also, I will point out, too, the comedy was really, really good in this movie. Uh, when the jokes hit, they really hit, and most of them hit. But there isn't as much comedy, which I liked. I liked that the movie took itself a little bit more seriously than the other Marvel movies. I think that really, really worked in its favor. And uh, it didn't need to be filled with comedy. But when all the comedy scenes happened, they really hit. Like, I like, you know, uh, Clint, what are you doing here? Disappointing my kids. That was really, really funny. Uh, Captain America kissing Sharon Carter. And then his two homeboys in the car giving him that, yeah, face. Like, that was really, really funny. Um... A lot of Tony Stark's lines, of course, were really great. And just overall, the movie was just, it was hilarious when it needed to be hilarious. And when it needed to be serious or heartfelt or emotional or badass, it did that too. And the comedy never felt like it was being too intrusive, like you could say for Iron Man or maybe Thor The Dark World. Uh, mainly Iron Man 3 is what I was getting at when I said Iron Man. Not Iron Man 1. Iron Man 1 had a good balance. So, yeah. Pretty much all I have to say because there really isn't much else. I mean, I talked about the action, I talked about the characters. Uh, I guess the only thing I really haven't really talked about much is the uh, the Winter Soldier thing with, like, those guys that were uh, frozen in the pods and shit. It was just a minor thing that this Zemo guy wanted to do to kind of make these guys split apart and everything, and it worked out. It was fine. There's just really not much to say about it. It was just sort of the thing that got Captain America and Iron Man to be separated from everyone else. Um, I guess I'll also mention the, uh, Bucky thing. Um, Bucky being put back under ice, I think is cool. I feel like he doesn't have to be, but since he can be mind controlled and it did happen in the movie, uh, it is kind of smart to just completely shut himself out. Um, oh, special effects too. Special effects were great. Uh, 
I was just about to say too the the one special effect in the movie that I thought didn't look too good was actually that after credit scene or that mid credit scene with Bucky. He goes under ice. And the dude's like, hey, you know, if they find out he's here, they're going to come for him. And fucking Black Panther's like, let them try. And then it zooms out and you see the giant, like, panther uh, rock formation. That thing looked fake. <laughs> maybe if I saw the movie again, I, I really looked at it, maybe not. But when I first saw it, that thing looked really fake. But that's, like, the one effect in the movie where I was like, okay, that looks bad. Everything else CGI-wise looked great. So... Yeah, not really much else to say, honestly. I'm kind of just thinking about the movie, and no, there's really nothing else. The characters were fantastic and on point. Spider-Man was great. The whole movie was just really, really awesome. It's definitely one of the best in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I think Captain America's movies are easily the best in the series. And uh, could this be called the first... Well, aside from... I don't consider the Dark Knight trilogy a great uh, trilogy, because I think the Dark Knight Rises kind of sucks, but... That one's considered to be, by most people, a good superhero trilogy from start to finish. Is the Captain America trilogy the second great one? I think it's the first great one, because fuck Dark Knight Rises, but I think that's safe to say, yeah. I mean, Captain America First Avenger, I think most people say that's a good movie. Uh, Winter Soldier, everyone raves about how it's one of the best in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then everyone's fucking loving Civil War, so I think this is the first trilogy i'm trying to think iron man has three movies uh thor is gonna have three movies but we don't know yet about the about ragnarok um what else spider-man we know spider-man got fucked up in its third well i think all the uh raimi movies not to digress way out of topic but i think all the raimi movies are kind of weak but spider-man 3 is the worst of them and it's you know obviously we're not going to count the spider-man trilogy we're not going to count the Iron Man trilogy because a lot of people have problems with Iron Man 3 and I wouldn't say it's a great movie or anything. So I think this is the first really great superhero trilogy. Tell me if I'm wrong in the comments below. And I'm talking outside of anything that's animated. I'm talking exclusively about live action. So yeah, go ahead and tell me in the comment section below about that because that's interesting. I don't see a lot of people mentioning that. But anyways... What did you guys think of Captain America Civil War? You guys can tell me in the comments section below. Uh, also, follow me on Instagram or add me on PSN. I'm Pat Platypus on both. Give this video a thumbs up. Share it on social media. Both of those would help me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already or if you like what you've seen here. If you watched this entire long-winded fucking rambling video, you must have thought it was okay to get this far. So please hit that subscribe button. And uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.